I have tried really hard to wrap my head around Toei Animation and its release of Sailor Moon Eternal. I don't understand it. The first part came out in theaters in Japan only in January. And now we're in early February and the movie is supposed to come out in six days. I'm filming this on the 5th. And there's no sign of a release here for part one and it's most likely the same for part two. However, they released a digest, aka a summary video, of Sailor Moon Eternal Part 1. And because I'm like dying for content and I really want to create more Sailor Moon Eternal videos, I'm gonna review it. I don't want to react to it just given the how long it is and it's really just all talking footage and even with the copyright exception, I, I feel that Toei would still give me a strike and I'm just not in the mood to deal with that. So I have watched it, I've broken it down, and I'm happy to discuss it. It is really the movie. There's a link to the digest in the video description, and it cuts out like a few plot points, but you're gonna get most of the film. Like if you are craving Sailor Moon Eternal, this is what you should be watching. So this is my mini review of the Sailor Moon Eternal Part 1 summary. All right, let's talk about it. So. Sailor Moon Eternal Part 1 really does focus on the inner Sailor Soldiers, which is, you know, it makes total sense because the next part focuses on the group of them together in Sailor Moon. And, you know, the beginning of the digest shows the four of them all beautifully animated, and they discuss what their dreams are. Minako wants to be an idol, Jupiter I think wants to be a wife, um, Mercury, I believe, wants to be a doctor, and Rei wants to be a shrine maiden. The upside with Sailor Moon is even if the anime is unsubbed the the language that the like the level of language they use is very easy to understand for non-japanese speakers i've been watching sailor moon since i was i think 11 and i've been watching the dub the uh, the sub excuse me since i was 16 so i i do not speak japanese by any way shape or form but i know enough words where i feel confident in what they're saying so oh and then also what i want to talk about is more than likely because I can't figure out when it would go to Netflix. I assume it would go to Netflix with an English dub, and I don't think the English dub is done, if it does go to Netflix at all. My guess is the movie is going to be released on Blu-ray in two, three months for part one, and then you know another two, three months for part two. And it's gonna be a Japanese-only Region A Blu-ray, which we can play in America with no subs. They did this for Crystal, part uh, season one, season two, and season three. With Crystal season one and two, they released 13 individual volumes. So each Blu-ray had two episodes. And then with uh, season three, they released three individual volumes. See, uh, season three was 13, and I believe the first one had four. It was like four, four, five, I believe. Anyway, that is my guess with how I will actually be able to discuss the movie with you in its full breath when I get that Blu-ray. Anyway, back to the, back to the digest. The, the girls all look fantastic. They, they're gorgeous looking. And then, you know, it goes in to them being depressed and losing their confidence but due to the due to the darkness, due to the the, the the dead moon. I thought it was really interesting how, first of all, how beautifully animated they are whilst they're in their depression. And then I have to say, the way in which they come out of the depression is very interesting to me. So to gain their superpowers, they have these connections to the outer soldiers. And this is the one problem that the manga in Sailor Moon Crystal Eternal has, is it doesn't establish the proper relationships with the inners and the outers, or quite frankly, even the inners. It's all about Moon and her relationship. But, you know, they have Mercury talking to, you know, hearing Uranus's voice, and then she meets Princess Mercury, and then she gets her Mercury crystal power. Mars talks to Neptune, and she gets her um, her Mars crystal. Uh, Jupiter was, I believe, believing talking to him? I believe, excuse me, that she was talking to Pluto, but quite honestly, I, the, I don't really understand why Jupiter would end up talking to Pluto. Like, they just have nothing in common, honestly. But in the, in the finale of season three, Pluto and her work together. Also, what I really liked with Mercury getting her confidence to summon Princess Mercury from Uranus, what, and the same thing with Neptune and Mars, is if you remember in Sailor Stars, when they were all broken up in the first six episodes, you know, Mercury was with Uranus and Neptune was with Mars. I thought that was really cool. Anyway, 
So it just shows that the connect the sailors are connected. And I do like that bond. I just really wish we got more. And it's not the movie's fault we didn't get more. It's just it's the way it's written. Um, you know, the original anime, thankfully, is able to provide character development, character relationships. Like, we all believe these characters are connected and that they're really good friends. And quite frankly, that's why I'm believing this story, because I have such a nostalgia for the original anime. But that is a fault of the film. And uh, at least a fault of the digest. Maybe the film expands upon it, but I doubt it. Um, two things this does skip out on is it skips out on Mercury, I'm sorry, on uh, Venus getting to meet human Artemis, which we saw in the trailer. So Artemis is the one that gives Venus her sailor crystal. And also, uh, dis, dis, not discredits, um, doesn't show, Phobos and Deimos. Phobos and Deimos, I love seeing them in the trailer. That was so cool. But anyway, it's nice that the outers are referenced in Eternal. You know, they were removed for all intents and purposes from Sailor Moon Super S. It's so stupid, so, so, so stupid. I like how the attacks look for their super forms. Mercury Aqua Rhapsody looks really different. Love and Beauty Shock looks really different. Flame Sniper and o Coconut Cyclone, or sorry, um, Oka Evolution, are very, very similar to the original, but they're touched up. I like Flame Sniper a bit more. I think Coconut, um, Oka Evolution is the lamest. Their transformations, it's, they just show them going Mercury Crystal Power with the, you know, the nails get, they get polished, and it has like the symbols from you know, this, the original anime behind them. I saw the transformations for a couple of them in the video and the music video, and I think they look great. Um, too bad they don't actually just like use the crystal because like you folks and demos give Ray or crystal. We we see them all holding their sailor crystals at one point. You would think that's what they would use. I'm really curious how the outer superpowers will look. Either way, seeing how the inners are are able to overcome their depression and then defeat the bad guys, it's excellent. It's absolutely excellent. And then the last thing that the Digest and the movie, in essence, would discuss is the relationship between Pegasus and Chibiusa. And Chibiusa and Pegasus in the trailers have been, at, you know, have like a little interaction, but like the trailers do not give the hype of who Pegasus is. And it, it's gorgeous in the trailer, like showing the relationship, showing the relationship of Pegasus with Chibiusa, showing Usagi kind of reacting to it, and showing how Chibiusa is trying to deal with the, you know, the demands of love. And I really do like it. Uh, Chibiusa gets her Moon Gorgeous Meditation Wand from Pegasus. So does Moon. There's a Moon Gorgeous Meditation Attack. It's gorgeous. We see very little new footage of the of the evil team. We see of the Amazonas and of Queen Helenia. At the end of it, we see a shot of Zirconia, and we also see a shot of Usagi coughing. Mamoru is essentially taken out of Sailor Moon Eternal. He's super sick because of the way Helenia is infecting the Earth. And that infection spreads to Usagi, and it looks like that's how part one would end, with Usagi getting really sick. They, they start throwing up black blood. It's actually very disgusting in the manga. Part two looks really cool. I'm really looking forward to it. There's We've seen a ton of footage. I want to see the film. I like how the Digest did leave the evil team in the dark. Like, from what we've seen, I know what's going to happen with the evil team. But I like how like the actual acts of Nehalenia and the Amazonas are, you know, they weren't front and stage of this. It's really, it's highlighting the inner soldiers, letting us see their attacks, letting us see how they, you know, become super. Minus Venus. Because you really don't see human Artemis. Showing the relationship of Pegasus and Helio, or Pegasus and Shibuya. So I think it's going to be a real, I think the digest is great. Like, I really felt like I just got to at least experience the movie on some level. I read the manga, I, I did a quick skim of the manga the other day just because I, I needed to see it, and I was going insane. So anyway, I like the digest. There's a link to it in the description. Share your thoughts about it in the comments below. I'm curious what you guys have to think about that. It's another just bit of Sailor Moon content we can watch. If you have a link at all, and the digest is official Toei content, so that's why I was okay with making this video. If you guys have, but I, I really want to support the official release. I would release, excuse me. I'm okay with going with a pay, with paying. If, but if you guys have a link to it somewhere, DM me, Instagram, Snapchat, Twitter. I want to see the film. I want to discuss it in film. So, anywho, thank you so much for watching and tweeting out me about my um, review of the Digest. I'm looking forward to actually seeing the real film. Now, as I said, I'm filming this on, on the 5th. Part, part 2 is in 6 days, and hopefully, hopefully, we'll finally get to see the super outer transformations. I want to see part 2 so badly. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching with me, and we'll talk real soon.